Okay, guys, just to kind of set the stage for what's going on here, while all of these events are happening and we have some downtime, most of the crowd is dispersing over to where JFED, the co-host, is, where we have exhibition booths. All the teams can talk about their vehicles. There's a virtual reality stand where people can enter the world of the Hyperloop. There's phone-up booths, food trucks, all sorts of fun. Life-size Jenga, tons of stuff over there. But in the meantime, back on this end, right next to the entrance of the tube, this is where the activity is happening. As you can see, the tube has been opened. We've removed the push on this end and we've removed Vaughn on the other end so they are outside of the tube now. But to recap where we are on the whole status of the competition, we had MIT go this morning. They were the first student pod ever to go down the Hyperloop test track with a pulled vacuum. They got up to about 80 kilometers an hour or so and had a fantastic run. Now remember, that is the 10th and final milestone. All the nine prerequisites were completed. Full functional checks of everything to make sure that they were ready to rock. Now we may have onboard cameras from their first, and we'll try to show that in a second, but as a quick reminder for the replay video that we're about to show of MIT's run down the vacuum hyperloop, it's very, very easy to make it seem like it's slow because we have light strips that are about 20 feet wide, and that makes an optical illusion, so it seems like it's going much slower than it is. In actuality, it's going freeway speed, so the same type of speeds that you would see in velocity in your car on the freeway. So we're going to replay that video again from inside the hyperloop of MIT's run earlier this morning. of what you would see as a passenger on an actual hyperloop would look like from MIT. We then had a few hours pass while they got out of the tube and far the team from Germany got ready to enter the tube and perform their test. We also have footage from their run later just now and they got up to around 93 million kilometers per hour, so the fastest speed that we've seen thus far. And we have video of that as well. We'll go then showing that in a moment. And then we're going to come back to a wide shot and then we're going to hang tight for a little bit while we wait for them. The team you see behind me from the Netherlands to get ready to perform their third run, the same thing that we've seen from MIT and from FA. So let's watch the VAR video now. So we're seeing them go through the hyperloop now. to go in. We have a SpaceX pusher that you can see in the corner of a friend that's going to insert Delft's pod to within the tube itself. Once it's inside, they perform quick power up checks to make sure everything works, make sure everything seems okay, and the system is healthy. After that point, the whole system, pod and pusher behind it, will be inside of the tube. We'll close the door behind them and then we'll begin the depressurization process where we bring it all the way down to nearly zero PSI so that they can travel with no air in front of them. That moment, once we have achieved the vacuum that they deem sufficient and we agree upon a speed that they think that they can get to, the pusher will bring them up to speed and again, they'll detach, uh, Dolph will coast, and then they'll come to a breaking. So that'll be the third and final full vacuum test that we see today and it will be comparing to the 80 or so kilometers per hour that MIT showed earlier and then the 93 or so that Todd did thereafter. Now there are two awards that we're going to be giving out today. The first is the fastest through there, so that's one of the things that these teams are chasing. But the other metric is the aggregate score from all of their prerequisite testing. So all the checkouts, those 10 milestones that I mentioned earlier that got them to this point, those will be scored and reviewed by SpaceX judges and added up. So we're going to try to maybe show that in a work ceremony later today, but until then, they're about to get into the tube, then we're going to pop it down to the vacuum, and then they're going to complete their third and final run in this SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition. So we'll show you the crowd again for a little bit, and then we'll come back with some more content when they're ready. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, these pods have all sorts of complicated systems on board, from sensors to determine how far they are, speedometers to determine how quickly they're going, and some teams have onboard cameras so that they can record video from the first-person perspective of the pod as it moves through the hyperloop. MIT is one of these such teams, and we have just received the video from them, so we're going to air that of the MIT pod moving through the hyperloop earlier today. Fantastic video of MIT moving through the hyperloop earlier today. Quick recap of what's happened and where we're at. MIT went far, went thereafter from Germany. And then now the pod you see behind me is Delft. They're getting mated up to the pusher. They will enter the hyperloop test track shortly. Then we will evacuate, which is a process that will take about half an hour, as we've said a few times. And then they will perform their third run, the third and final team who is going to perform a vacuum run here today for the SpaceX hyperloop pod competition. Hang tight with us and we'll return when we're going to cover that action. Just behind me, you can see the closed door, which marks the entrance of the Hyperloop test track. We're inside Delft. The team from the Netherlands is getting ready right, for the ready. third time. The third vacuum run through a test track here in Hawthorne. This is the third time this has ever happened. 
right now, Delph to get up to this point, we completed the barrage of checkouts that were necessary that John just briefed us on. Now, after that finished, they sat down with the SpaceX review team. The Hyperloop test director agreed upon a speed that they think they should be able to expect to get to. And at that point, now they're inside of the tube. Five. We've depressurized and we're actually in the now. So let's tune in and check that out. Uh, The SpaceX pusher is bringing Delft up to speed, at which point it will detach and the student design pod will coast on its own, attempting to reach a maximum speed possible. MIT was clocked at 80 kilometers per hour. We've just passed that. Far went up to about 93 kilometers per hour, which we're reaching here now. 94 kilometers per hour. Official as of this point, but it's now coasting and bringing itself to its own stop. And that was the Delft payload going through the SpaceX Hyperloop test track for the third time ever. Now that concludes the three teams that were intending to go through this test track. We're going to have Virginia Tech do an open air test later. We're not going to be covering that portion. So at this point, the judges sit down. We go over the official formal speeds that they went through. We go over all the different criteria that all the teams brought up to this point. And then we'll come back with some closing remarks and the final teams of this competition as the crowd cheers behind me. So we'll rejoin you shortly with the final results, and we'll go from there.